We have three is less than five. Is that a true statement? Well, yes, it is. 12 divided by six is greater than three minus zero, also known as two is greater than three. No, it's not. That is a false statement. When we look at this next one, we get 12 is less than or equal to 10. So we're evaluating everything on the left-hand side, and then we're just comparing it to something on the right-hand side. 12 is less than 10, tw less than or equal to 10. That is not a true statement. 9 plus 5 is equal to 4 plus 10. 9 plus 5 is 14. 4 plus 10 is 14. 14 is, in fact, equal to 14. So now we have looked through a few expressions. Great. We have figured out how to evaluate both sides and then come up with a Boolean value. So now that we've figured out a little bit about expressions, um, we want to use that information to mean something to our computer. So let's take a moment, think back about variables. In fact, any of the values in an expression can be a variable. So here, for example, is an expression that lives plus four, four is less than score minus one. And I want you to pause this video and evaluate the expression for a single Boolean value. So what you probably just did was something that looks like this. You took the value of lives and the value of score and input them for those variables. So we have five plus four is less than score minus 10, or 10 minus one, excuse me, and we get nine is less than nine. Is that a true statement? In fact, no, it is false. Nine is not less than nine. So now we have taken a variable and added into our equation so that we can um, evaluate something that might have a different value depending on what the variable represents. Slight note. Any expression that can be evaluated for true or false is known as a Boolean expression. So what you have been working with so far are Boolean expressions. So why are these so cool in computer science? Why would I bother caring about Booleans? They help computers look like they are making decisions. Um, so they can make choices based on whether something is true or false. Here, for example, is a statement. Can I go to the movies? I'm allowed to if it's before 8 o'clock. So pause for a moment with this video. What information do I need to know? Go ahead and create a baggie, a variable, and store that information. Give it a name. So on slide three, here's your chance to think of the variable. If I want to go to the movies and it's allowed before 8 o'clock, then what information do I need? I need to know the time. So I'm going to take this baggie, this would be my variable, and I'm going to name it time. Do that on your third page. So can I go to the movies? I'm allowed to if it's before 8 o'clock. That means I need a variable called time because I want to know what time it is. Um, now, you may have named your variable hour or something different. That's totally fine, but you want to represent what time is it now? So this, what you see in front of you, is called a flowchart. A flowchart kind of helps us figure out a decision. And so I start with the information that's at the very top. So I start with time with some value I'm going to put in there. I process it by looking at how this evaluates, this Boolean expression. And then depending on what the answer is, I will get one result or another. So can I go to the movies? I'm allowed to if it's before eight o'clock. Let's say it's nine o'clock. Can I go to the movies? Okay, so let's process this together. I'm gonna put nine in for my time, assign nine to the variable time. Great, let's keep going. Now I'm going to input nine into time in my Boolean expression. I see that I have a comparison operator. Okay, let's do some comparing. Nine is less than eight. Is this a true, false, true or a false statement? In fact, it is false. So I'm going to keep following this flowchart and then I am going to follow down this false path. I cannot go to the movies. Mm. Have to try again later. 
Here's another statement. Have I won a game? So thinking about programming, I might be programming a game. Has my user won? I have if my score times my life is greater than 10. Okay, let's pause. Create baggy variables, perhaps more than one, to store the information. Give them names. What do you think? Pause the video. Take a minute to think about what the Boolean expression will look like. What will be compared? So go ahead and fill out your bags or multiple baggies and then keep going. So now we are on page four of our assignment and this is our chance to think about what variables we need for this condition. We've got my score and my lives. So we really have two things we have to keep track of. So the first one I might just call score. And the second one, I just might call lives. All right, you can turn back. Okay, so I'm going to have two bags. I'm going to have one for my score and one for my life. So I'm going to have score. And I probably am going to create another bag with a sticky note called lives. So here's a flowchart um, to represent have I won the game. I have if my score times my lives is greater than 10. I have two baggies, score and lives, to represent my two variables. And what I would like for you to do is pause the video, follow the flowchart with these imports. There are three different tests. And chances are your flowchart is going to give you a different result depending on your input. So go ahead and pause and we'll look at this together afterwards. So now we're on page five of your assignment and we've got these test data to try out and see which ones are going to be winning and which ones are going to be losing. We're going to write our results over here on your slide. Let's do the first one together. So score is three and lives is three. I can come up here and do a three and a three. So I've got my variables and their values. Now here's my expression, score times lives. Let's take one of these over here and let's figure out what evaluate this expression. So three times three, and that's going to give me a nine. Is nine greater than 10? Well, that's false. So the result is false or I haven't won the game yet. So I can, okay. All right, now I'm going to leave you to do the other two and write down your results on this slide. And then when you're finished, so stop the video, do these two tests, and then return to the video. Okay, so I'm going to do an example where I put in the values for score and live. So for my score, I've got three. For my lives, I also have three. When I take those values and put them in to my expression, I have score gets the value of three, lives is also three, three times three evaluates to nine, is nine greater than 10? Nine greater than 10 is a false statement. Unfortunately for me, I have just evaluated this expression and I need to follow down this path. I haven't won the game yet, keep trying. So here's a challenge. Is my dog older than me if his age is converted to human years? Just so you know, seven dog years equals one human year. So every year that I grow older by one year, in dog years, my dog grows older by seven years. So I want you to, again, think about what information needs to know. Create a baggie or baggies to store that information. Give them names. And then what do you think? Pause the video. Take a minute to think about what the Boolean value and expression will look like. What will be compared? Now we're on page six of your assignment, and we're gonna try out, decide what variables do we need for this. So we're talking about the dog is being older than me, and we're talking about ages, okay? So the first one might be something like dog age, and the second one might be something like my age. So it's a little bit confusing because they're talking about being older 
but really we're talking about ages here, so think about that. Now you can, we'll return back to the video. Here's an example of that flowchart. So dog age, my age are the two inputs that I have added here. Dog age times seven is greater than my age. If that is true, my dog is older than me. If that is false, I am older than my dog. So for example here, if my dog age were two, uh oh, two, and my age is 15, dog age times seven, two times seven is going to be 14. Is 14 greater than 15? No, it is not. So at this point, whew, I am older than my dog.